There's something funny I was going to tell you about Community Vanek. Oh, are you? I was just going to ask, are you excited for Dungeons and Dragons, our own version? It's not going to happen. It's on May the 4th. I'll be watching Star Wars. I'm going to meet mm, you guys. I was going to shapeshift uh, you, you know? I was going to cast a spell on you. <laughs> to what? <laughs> Gosh. That is the meanest. Like, it took me three viewings to understand the concept of why they're playing with them. And I'm like, this is a dark episode. <laughs> Because he's going to kill himself. Yeah. And then Pierce comes in and just bullies him to death. <laughs> oh. By but the there's looking, something. He's in that line for a while. <laughs> there's something weird. There's so many different levels to it. Like, I don't know if Dan Harmon's just a genius or like, <laughs> like what's going on. You know what I mean? Just on that. Not on any other cartoon. Well, I guess he's good on um, Rick and Morty, but that new one he has, Crapopolis. Ugh. He's done. Is it just Rick and Morty and that that I, he's? I thought Arch he had one other. Guys. I'm sure he's had his fingers in. Mm. I thought he had one other, other one, big show. The other, the alien one was not him. It was uh, he who cannot be named anymore. Hmm. Right. Yeah. He who gets canceled. Mm. The, speaking of canceled, it's kind of a good segue into like not necessarily cancellation, but bankruptcy. <laughs> Say goodbye to our favorite park. Was it our favorite park? I think we were in love with the idea of it because I love Evermore Park, but I always kind of got the impression like that it was a little poorly managed. I mean, our hello nerds, nerds like we we made <laughs> a lot of friends there, so we know a lot more than other commoners. Any muggles, right? Any NPCs? Yes. Well, okay, maybe maybe, maybe we could just do it super fast because we've already talked about it a thousand times. But the park is in Pleasant Grove. It's like a full experience, like a live action role play park with actors and commentators and like activities to do. Um, and maybe we, you and I could talk about like some of like the reasons why we think it went under, you know, where we think it could go afterwards, because the lease group that owns the land, like said that they have a plan in place. So I don't know what that means. I've heard, I've heard a bunch of different rumors, so we could kind of go into rumor mongering. Um, I don't know. I kind of just want to jump into it. So yeah, no, when it, the concept is beautiful, right? Um, come as many times as you want. Um, role play, right? Be part of the guild. Be part of the park, right? Yes. The hard part is going more than once a quarter. Well, and that was – so that was the interesting thing is they wanted you to come all the time, but the business uh, plan was set up, the business structure, I don't know what you want to call it, it was set up so that, like, there wasn't, like, a membership. Like, you couldn't do, like, a monthly membership there. You had to pay 20 bucks every time you went, and that just doesn't – that's not feasible. They tried to though. Remember, they were gonna try this se- like a season pass. But... Yeah, but did they ever do it? No, I don't. I don't think we followed up with them. Yeah, I don't. But... I never heard of one. Yeah, I know they were trying it, but they. It was always every quarter was unique though. It's not like they made it the same, right? Like you, you want to go in a few months. Right. The the amount of effort into it was pretty pretty awesome. I think so. Like in terms of style, I think it gets ten out of ten. Like. You know what I mean? Like, it was such a beautiful park in the aesthetic. I think the actors did a great job. I'd give them a 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah, I loved them. They were great. But there was never, like, an overarching story or message. Or, like, you'd show up and, like, I heard this from multiple people. You just don't really know what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, they try to guide you. I feel like the first time we went, they were, boom, in our face. Where do you guys want to go? Like, right there. But I feel like that kind of died down. Like, they didn't have one person waiting for the new... <clears throat> the original experience was you portal, right? When you walk through the door, you're transported somewhere else. So you have a narrator there to explain. And that helped us a lot the first time. But even then, I don't know. It was, it wasn't, it was like, it wasn't really built for a one-time trip, but then it also wasn't built for like going all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like there were, it still needed to be wrinkled out a little bit. Like if I go to Lagoon, which is like our local Disneyland amusement park, Six Flags, I can go and have fun one time and I get it's an amusement park, but same with like Disneyland. Like you can go to certain parks and do just a one day thing. And it's super fun. This to me, it was always like, it was hard to have a cohesive, like you needed to go like maybe once a week and you and I could never commit to that. No. I mean, even if you're next door to it, it's hard. Like you yeah. have to go bare minimum twice a month, bare minimum, just to In keep order- the story alive. Right. And you could have had like a one day story that they do. You know what I mean? Like what, a one they shot just do it on repeat. Nerds. Yeah, kind of like how Pirates of the Caribbean has like a one shot story that you know it's like it starts at the start of the day and it ends at the end of the day, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like each ride has its own story. Like each portion of the park could have a one day story, and then you could have an overarching story that I don't know. 
there, there are things they could have done is all I'm saying. That I'm kind of starting off with the bad, in case you can't tell. I figured we can bad, good, nerdy it. It's never been done before, or has it? <laughs> I uh, don't know. No, but that's true, though. Like, it, we were, every nerd was like, it's there. I can feel it, right? Like, what is it, the old Ryan thinking about Kelly? Do I like the idea of Evermore? Or do I like Evermore? Right? Yeah, exactly. Because a long there... time ago, it was, a, they were making it in just a LARPing park. Uh, before Evermore took over, it literally was a group like, hey, this is a park. Let's build a castle on each side, kind of like the um, role models, that movie that came out a couple of years ago, a long time ago, uh, where you would just LARP, though, not paying. It's just, here's your guild. Everyone goes on a Saturday. And then they tried to make it into, a, a, um, not a money grab, but a successful park. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What's the nerdier, Dungeons and Dragons or LARPing? <sighs> Dude, I think LARPing, because there's just more to it. LARPing <laughs> is live action role play. Yeah. Uh, and there's way more to commit. you like, you got to get stuff. D and D, it's just uh, we're in someone's basement trying to stay awake. Yeah, and D and D's become more mainstream. Larping still hasn't quite caught on. No, and that's like the what? Like you and me, we don't say no to nerd stuff, but we've yet to be tempted to larp. Let's even say that I don't think we're tempted to larp. No, it, it doesn't really appeal to me. <laughs> I'm more if we get a good camera crew, if if we get it going, I'm down for the experience. But it's gonna be not a like a one shot larp for us. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't even know that, Johnny. I'll film for you. I'll, I'll hold the boom mic for you. How's well, that? You know, I would run it. Hi ho, good sirs. Doth mother know thou wearest her drapes? Uh, okay, so what would you say is your biggest high from Evermore Park? Like the best know, experience I, that you I had? Always, every time we went, I always had a good feeling. Uh, like this is fun. We were never bored. There's a lot to do. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly. I'll give a few of them. I really loved when you archered your little heart out and uh, were able to six. You, you grew once you did it. Like you leveled up, right? Yeah. I got a prize. And also, one of the best parts was just when people recognize us from there because we made a lot of good friends from there. Uh, I did love that. Yeah. Like, I was going like, to say they remembered us and we didn't really remember them, but we loved them either way because they were wearing costumes. It's hard. They, we remembered one, one or two of them. No, yeah. We remember the vast majority, but. There's one of them. It's like, hey, you guys are back. And we're like, where were you last time? Oh, I was a pirate. Now I'm a knight. Like, you know, it was such a big leap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, um, like, oh, yeah, we ran into you guys at Fanex. You know what I mean? Like, they're very uh, good people who were great actors. Yeah, the actors, the casting was 10 out of 10. They did such a good job, and they were so committed. I like, always loved it. We break all the time. They did not break. We tried. Yeah. <laughs> we would try and get them to break. Yeah, we I did... would break without even trying. Like we just started smirking before we even get up there. They saw us coming a mile away. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, okay, my two big ones. I loved the aesthetic of the park. I kind of mentioned that going into it, but like everything's made from stone. Uh, it's just it's very. It feels like you transfer to a whole new world. Like the amount of lights, the amount of just kind of. I love doing laps with you. We would just get our steps in and check out all the buildings. Um, kind of get lost. And then the other thing I was going to say was the actors. I always connected with them. I felt like we just kind of, I don't know. We, we, they, they just did a good job. Um, they bantered really well with us. I'm, they're used to it. Right. But we always love when people interact with us and they were, willing I, I to keep it going. I usually felt like whatever felt scripted from them. So whatever someone else was writing their writing team, I didn't love, but when they went off script, like their improv, I really, <clears throat> I really enjoyed. Yeah. The, the, the net, what is it? The, the, the whole concept of the, the storyboard made sense. It just wasn't executed correctly. Like, like they try to make it, you have to go a lot to understand what's going on. Like there was a guild that took over this other guild, but we wouldn't have known unless you went three weeks in a row, right? Or yeah. the pirate lost his, um, his, his girl, stole it from this guy. And we were like, we don't know any of this. Like it, but it was common knowledge in the park if you go every week. Yeah, but no, no you know, it's, it's hard. And a, a lot of people became workers just to get in for free, right? Like we talked to a few of them. They're like, oh, I'm just the cleaning crew. So I clean on Friday and I can enjoy the park the next day. Right. What's funny is there's a lot of people who do go. Like, I don't know if their parents just didn't really like they were like, ah, you know what? <laughs> 
I need you out of the house. So <laughs> here's 20 bucks. Go to Evermore. I'm going to drop you off. This is cheaper well, than though, daycare. Right? It's a safe place. It goes pretty late. <laughs> I, I do think there were some people where it was cheaper than daycare for them, so they just dropped them off. <laughs> I'm shocked. Uh, I'm shocked. Uh, our producer didn't just drop us off. Yeah. No, I know, right? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure our, our producer be like, "Hey guys, <laughs> you take care of these two buffoons," and we'll be like, "Yeah, <laughs> money, please, money, please." <laughs> okay. Like, so so there, go there ahead. Was, we, we almost read, like I almost read this. One of my favorite are the the fire dancers. They were so talented and so interactive. Right, they're uh, only there for one year, though. Really? I think they kind of outgrew it. Years. Maybe they they were there for two years. You're right. Yeah. They were there for two years. They weren't there the, the third year we went. Oh, okay, but but there was um acrobat, I think people the third year maybe as well. Like some of those stayed. Um, yeah. Very well. Yeah, done. and they would okay. they would change seasons. I it makes me it feels it makes me feel like if they can get someone else in, who can have a perfect overarching story, it could potentially actually work. So maybe we could talk about the future with that. What do you I think? I like that. You want to go future? Or do you have more? No, that was it. Okay. I, I'm I'm good on. I mean, it. I'm still mad. You and me never got our revenge on that pirate. <laughs> do you still remember his name? No. Oh, what was it? I think it was Booker. Booker. Yeah. <laughs> Three years trying to get Booker. <laughs> we never even ran into him. Yeah. <laughs> like... I think he's probably pulled trade by somebody else. But and also the very last time there's only one pirate and we felt bad for him and we kind of joined him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, we were kind of like, yeah, we were unfaithful to the we guilds, we'll say that. Unfaithful. Let's go in. Okay, <laughs> Knights, what do you think you should do? I don't know where I'm going, I'm going ahead on this. Let us say what we want, and then we'll just see what you guys want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I'm you want? Rusty. You know, but the thing is, is like, I feel like sometimes people don't make it all the way to the end of the video, so we can just say now, like, if you can't make it to the end, just comment below and tell comment us, like, below, what, you, yeah. what is it you want? What are you talking about, Jay? We got 10,000 minutes somehow in, like, one month. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> well, comment you, below you, uh, and then see if we're you're going to predict what we actually want to see. Thank you. Who is it? Uh, Kitty? Who's our who's our troll? Kitty who's Purr. Kitty? Kitty Purr. Yeah, thank you for watching all seven hours of this. <laughs> I miss Kitty Purr. Yeah. I know they're still out there. They're, they're, they're just. There. They're just incognito mode. Yeah, even more. <laughs> uh, so the big rumor I've heard, and maybe I'm the one who's starting this rumor, honestly. I think I'm also starting with I know exactly where you're going, and I and I 120% love it. Is it that Brandon Sanderson yeah. is going to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, uh, that's what my family told me when we were having uh, Easter in there. They're the ones who broke the news to me, and I texted you, and we couldn't find it. They were yeah. like, no, they – Sanderson, totally. Oh, yeah, it makes sense, right? It makes sense. It does. Yeah. The, so the, the Brandon Sanderson, the famous author, the local famous author, it is said. He's one true white whale to get on the cast. Dude. Okay. Real quick. I know people love tangents, so I'm going to make sure to do a tangent. So a few weeks ago, I went and saw Dune 2 and, and Brandon Sanderson just so happened to be like, I was, I stopped to get popcorn and I see Brandon and I'm like, <gasps> and my wife sees him and she, she does this <laughs> for those of you just Turns listening. Yeah, it was a slow Palpatine turn where you, you know, <laughs> slowly turn. And she she looks at him and I look at her. And <laughs> Anyway, well, we got our popcorn and I, I said a little prayer in my heart. I was like, I really want to meet this guy. Like, please, universe, <laughs> manifest it so that he walks my way. Because he could either walk, walk my way to get like nachos and a drink or he could walk to the theater if he had his popcorn and it was good. I was so happy he needed his nachos or whatever it was he ordered. <laughs> and so he walked by me and I just go, hey, Brandon, you here to see <laughs> Madam really Webb? <laughs> No. Okay, good. <laughs> that was like my uh, Newman voice from Seinfeld. <laughs> nice game, pretty boy. <laughs> no, I, what I did. Okay, I did say that though. I said, "Hey, Brandon, are you here to see Madam Web?" <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was pretty funny. That is and actually Brandon, for you, clever. <laughs> Brandon. So, well, here's the thing: is I had I was like four people behind him in line, so I had time to think of a funny thing okay, to good, say. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. I'm like Batman of writing, except for like not, you know, like <laughs> Batman, like one tenth of Batman is like, you know, one hundredth. Yeah. Anyway, so he stops. He's so kind. He's like, no, but I really want to see it, actually, just so I can like do he wants to do like a story, you know, like evaluation of it because it's so bad. Sort of. a Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a hate follow that people that follow us hatefully. We get it. It's like watching the room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Anyway, we started talking and eventually I was like, all right, well, I need to let this guy go because he gets, you know, he gets bombarded by people. So I, I 
sort of, we talked about a few things. My neighbor and him went to college together and are really good friends. And so he was telling me about how my neighbor, the guy, so I'm pretty good friends with this neighbor. And he's like, he's my only friend who won't let me put him in my books for whatever reason. So mm-hmm. he was kind of giving me that story and we were chatting and, you know, I'm, I'm not even hearing a word. I'm just staring <laughs> into his eyes. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, dream weaver. <laughs> That uh, Wayne's World just keeps in here, just all starry eyed, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> will be my guest one day. Oh yeah, <laughs> will be my guest one day. Yeah, I was just grateful that like, <laughs> well here. So here's the other funny part though. So we get into the theater. We we had this great conversation with him for you know maybe a minute. Yeah, uh, and then I let him go. Well, what I thought was great was I left him wanting more because ah, I actually yes. ended it. Yes. I'm so sweet. <laughs> but we get into Playing the hard theater. To get. Exactly, playing hard to get. I want to. I want to meet him again and be like, "Do you remember me?" <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Madam yeah, Web joke, <laughs> Dune Two. He oh, might yeah. because I'm. I'm kind of memorable, you know. He's just gonna be like, "Oh yeah, it's hello, nerd. It's hello, Exactly. <laughs> what it'll be is like he won't remember me, and then you'll appear, and he'll be like, "Oh no, oh, yeah, I do." Yeah, <laughs> Back of the line, nerds. But we have to wear dead light nerds uh, <laughs> swag, or else they won't even. Oh, so okay. We're still on this tangent, so it's okay. But we <laughs> a tangent on a tangent. Yeah, Dan Wells, who was on our podcast, go watch Dan Wells. He's a fam- another famous author, really good friends with Brandon Sanderson. Anyway, we we went to him at a convention, and he like sees one of us, and he's like, and then he sees the other, one and he goes, oh, <laughs> and he like, and he says, I know the shirts, and I'm like, we've been referenced worse, so we'll take it. It's true. He's not even going to recognize us next time, though. He's going to be like, what happened to your friend? <laughs> Yeah, why is he the size of a house? J Muscle Man. <laughs> um, okay, but back to Brandon. So this is the, the final funny part of the story. And then we'll get back to Evermore Park and Brandon buying it. Um, so we get in, we, we we sit in our seats, and the two seats next to me are totally open. And they keep staying open. And I'm like, they're luxury seats because, you okay. know, you know okay. me. Oh, I need my luxury. You, uh, you go all out. Yeah. Well, you I, do, I, it's I, harder for you with the leg room, man. It's easy for me. I can sit anywhere. Yeah, you. <laughs> I I just what it is is I actually like just being closer to the screen. So <laughs> <laughs> the luxury just so happened to be like the best seats in terms for me to just be able to not even see the edges of my you vision. Just treat yourself. Yeah, exactly. So the whole time I was like, what if he sits next to me? <laughs> Could you imagine? I'm just like whispering in his ear and he just gets up and leaves. It cuts out. Uh, we they pan out and all it is is you staring at him and not the movie at all. Just yeah. <laughs> I've tilted my seat back far enough so like I can just <laughs> glare the night away. Oh, that would be so bad. He did not sit next to me. No, I watched him when he walked in. I was staring at him, tracking him, <laughs> and he kept walking up the stairs. And I went, ah! <laughs> too open next to me, Brandon. I know. I was going to say that. Oh, oh. So, yeah, it would. It, you know what we need to do. We need to get him free ticket. We need to find one of these theaters and we need to pay for an ad for the Deadlight Nerds. <laughs> and then like just for this one theater. And then we need to send him two tickets for him and his wife to go watch whatever film, you know, we think that he's going to want to see. And then he'll go and see our ad. And he'll, and it's just like us with Dan Wells. I'm all for it. It's like some mim- uh, subliminal, subliminal messaging. Yeah. It's like Inception. Yeah. We'll just have Dan be the main part. Right. Like talking and, to then, and, and then, then and then we're sitting behind him and we have chloroform. <laughs> We just hand them like our swag and walk away. <laughs> oh, I was meaning like a full on like, Ugh! and then we like transport him to, you know, our, our the streaming theater location. theater is actually behind the stage as us recording it. All the walls fall down and <laughs> it's a recording studio. Yeah. Into our van. We could be, you remember how you and I talked about a mobile, a mobile uh, <laughs> podcast? This is one of our yeah, original ideas. everywhere. Yeah. We get a van. <laughs> And then Jay started to Google how to get 12-year-old people to know. <laughs> Do not Google that. <laughs> that was a Big Bang reference. Mind you, nerds. Okay. All right. Final tangent, Johnny. And then we're back to Evermore Park. But in the office, this is an office theory since we always have to bring up the office once. In the office, Dwight or Michael says, I know a ton of 12-year-old girls who could beat W, Dwight. <laughs> and Jim goes, you know a ton of 12-year-old <laughs> girls? But here's the thing. That tracks because in Scott's Tots, the kids that he promises would probably be roughly about 12 years old at the time, at the time when he, he makes that reference. So like, and a quick uh, shout out to my client, Kenzie, cause I got her to watch the, the super fan episodes on Peacock on the office. Cause no one believes me when I was like, no, it's like watching a new series. And she binge watched like three seasons in a day. So mm. 
there could be a lot of rumor, a lot of uh, things solved if anyone watches those. I like that. So let me ask you this. What would a Brandon Sanderson amusement park look like? And do you think it would work? Um, we went to Dragon Con, right? Or what was it called? Dragon Steel. Dragon Steel, right? How many people were at that? If his name is on it and you make it, he's going to have to tweak it to be a little bit more of his world, right? The, right. What is it called? The Skyward? The Cosmere. Cosmere, right? If he makes it just a hint of that, or, or honestly, if he made it a full for that, I think it would do even better. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he would structure that. Like, would the stories be taking, like, would you meet Kaladin? Would you just be having his characters there? Like, is it kind of like Harry Potter world or Star Wars land, but Cosmere world where you're meeting his That's characters? That's what I would say, right? It, you're, you're, you're in the universe, but it's your own telling of it, right? They do this well. I forget. It's, it's a tabletop game, but it's more card played. Uh, that the people who play it dictate how the world goes. So there'll be like um, little tiny segments of, um, man, I'm more, I'm more sorry, nights. I'm more cloudy than normal. Uh, little groups, guilds everywhere. And if a guild takes over, that'll run the story. And that'll get people more involved because you want that guild to dictate the story. It could be for a whole quarter too. Like beat it, you take a whole quarter to take the, Quarters of three months for those who aren't in business school like Jay. Uh, have that be the the story, and then have them take over for three more months, and then recycle, like, and then switch it up, or or not until you can dethrone them. Right. It's like Magic: oh, The Gathering. There's a tabletop game like that where whoever like the guild that wins kind of dictates things, and it's super exciting. Okay. I don't know that you could do it every quarter though. Because it kind of goes back to our issue of like you'd have to be going a lot in order to keep oh, yeah. up with the story. I, I assume with him, it could be had... like a daily thing per quarter. Is that what you're saying? Like you have a daily thing that refreshes I guess, per quarter. I mean, he, I feel like he could get away of like a pass. I don't know. What, what, what would be realistic? I don't. So my thought was how they do Star Wars Land: just copy and paste that, but have the characters be from the Cosmere. I mean, it all works. I mean, I don't see the money behind it. I thought money, everyone has, has fake money to go places, right? Right. Yeah. No, I, and that's the hard part is I don't know. Brandon Sanderson is a huge name. I don't know if it's big enough for that. It would I mean, be. That's true. His dragon still is what? 30 bucks for two days. It's not that implausible. Right. It would be interesting. I don't know. Like look at Lord of the Rings. I don't know. It's so hard to determine. You'd have to do market research, which we haven't done. So it's, we're shooting from the cuff to try and decide. No, it, the, the, the only way any of this will ever work is either $5 daily or, you know what I mean? Like it has to like be... A, like a season pass thing. A season pass. And I wonder if it, if it's even cost efficient, right, to do a season pass because they might... We don't know their overhead. It might be a gnarly overhead. Right. Yeah, um, I don't know how... I don't know how... I, someone would have to run the numbers. So I he might not he might not even do it, but I do... I ha- keep hearing rumors that he's buying land or buying things or he's going to... He's going to open his up, up his own Sanderson world. You see that big? Yeah. But how do you do it for, you know, when we went our third time, I think uh, there was a, a father and daughter duel there. Right. And they don't get to see each other a lot. And he got a room in the hotel room next door across the street and he was able to enjoy the park. But that's not that big. Like that's so not I- enough to hold him over. Right, I think the way you have to make money with a lot of these things is merchandise. So, like in Star Wars Land, you sell a lightsaber. Here, you'd have to sell like it's got to be merchandise. It has to be Cosmere themed things. I mean, we saw how big that line was a Dragon Steel for his yeah. stuff. But... Dude, wasn't that wild? Yeah, we went into a room and like five hundred we... people. No, it was probably like four thousand. Like and just in a line waiting were... to get signatures and. And it was nonstop. It wasn't like because it's seven o'clock at night. Everyone's off work, right? No, it was just. The security guard told us it was, this is triple in all day. Dude, it was wild. But it also is rare. Maybe once that, that one makes it more memorable, right? Like you can only get it that con or, you know, once you take away the rarity of it, it might be less. But there are things in his universe that you could in theory buy or get that would be, so you were at, you were at, um, at, at Dragon Steel with me and like, you could see a lot of the uh, cosplayers and stuff would be interesting to have copy and paste it into a place like Evermore Park where they can buy things like wax and wane pistols or like other things like that. You know what I mean? Like you have things that you can purchase 
that are merchandise, kind of like how Star Wars treats it, where you're like you're buying outfits or costumes or build your own lightsaber, build your own whatever shard blade. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty interesting. Um, okay, what? Well, let's move on past Sanderson because we've kind of talked about this to death. Let's talk about like what else could they do if not Sanderson? Like, what else could they do at Evermore <laughs> Park to fix it? Is the same owner the one that owns that little like racetrack next to it? I think so. Because that's, I mean, are they going to just sub lease it? I mean, to, to keep the park as it is, they're going to need a big group, right? Right. Uh, if they were just going to use what's there, you can't even rent it out because no one's going to make rent it out multiple times. Or uh, like where some of our friends got married and, and it's like kind of a big looking castle thing. It's, it won't do enough headway. Right. I think right. they would just kind of merge it with the racetrack. Hmm. So like redevelop it. Yeah. I feel like it's just that land is there. Maybe he'll make a putt putt golf. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just think as far as keeping it as a fantasy world, the current ownership can't do it. What if they built housing and it was like a, like a hotel? Then you thing. and me are going to have to get a lot of loans because we're going to live there. <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting. I don't know. That one's that one's interesting. What else? I just could you don't do know with how they with without support and a restructure because I don't think they're going to open it up again with the same idea. Sadly, right. it's dead. Right. Yeah, I think you're right because I don't, I don't know who would back it or who would take it. And, up. and even then, it's kind of like they it won't know be how the to, same exact. It might just be like a Mulligans, right? Where there's putting, there's arcades. It's a cool little area. There's race tracks. Is it Mulligans? Right. Is that what it's called? Yeah. No, sorry, Boondocks. I'm so sorry, Boondocks. Mulligans has something similar, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Boondocks is what I was thinking of. Because uh, we grew up kind of by Boondocks, so it's not out of the ordinary for us. Uh, where, you know, you pay 20 bucks, but there's a lot to do. And you don't right. have to worry about actors and this. It's just maintenance on the machines. That might be hard. But that's the only way that I can say they make money while keeping half of what's there. Because they what, finally refinished it last winter. Pretty much every... Like, there's a lot of things that were closed for three years. And they finally built that new um they call it like the the dra- the skyrim type house that we went and looked at the stars yeah i don't know i don't know what you're talking about but i don't know what it would be you know what i mean though so they finally finished a the lot terrarium. of stuff that wasn't done right so that's why it was yes. weird it's like I, felt, I just feel bad they finally invested more and then it didn't help dude they always had issues so just some fun background like there were contractors like this was all in the news there were contractors who like they promised they would get paid and they said they had financing and the contractors please finish the work and it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars and they just never paid them and there were all these liens on the property a lien is like when a contractor performs work so like if you buy a property the bank places a lien on it with your mortgage if a contractor comes and performs work and you're not paid, they place a lien as well until they're paid. So they have ownership rights until they're paid off. Anyway, so that's basically what was happening because they weren't getting paid. Um, kind of wild. That's so bad too. Dude, it was – so that was like why I kind of had a hard time with management. Like I always loved the idea, but you and I like love the idea and we love the actors. Oh. But I always had a hard time with management because I work in the construction industry. And so it was always like hearing them – you know, kind of be a little bit, uh, what do you call that? Like smoke and mirror with to contractors is like just tough, shady, like not a good business practice. It's a bad look. Sketchy. Yeah. Way sketchy, bro. Uh, <laughs> like uh, I don't like that. And we talked a lot too with our, 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 our giant, uh, British friend, I always forget his name, but you know, who knows? <laughs> like they weren't even at Fanex last year. And that's like their market group. They were not at the convention. And he, remember, he left, he left Evermore before the end, like, you know, so now it's closed, but within a year he had left. Um, and he had talked about like, you know, his issues with management. He saw so. it coming. I think he saw it coming too. Like he knew. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Because when we, like they were, they had puppets, they were trying so well, which is great. But man, if you're getting, cause every time we went, it felt busy. I never felt it was a dead park. No, it never was. It was always right? busy. We had people walking in front of our cameras and me rolling my yeah. eyes. And and it's not like we <laughs> went on a special day. It's not like it was like, oh, oh. a half off day. Like we went on like an, any regular Friday. We had a lot of perks because we're pressed. So we got invited a lot of times. Uh, yeah. But still, it's not. And they asked us to go on a non-busy time. Right. Yeah. I remember the first time busy. we went. 
they were like, hey, do you guys mind coming in on a Thursday night instead of the weekend where people are there longer or a yeah. Friday night, not Saturday morning? And it was still super busy. Super busy. You had to remember we had to wait like 30 minutes for me to do my little archery thing. Yeah. And and it's not this is what we've we've been noticing a lot at the Renaissance Fair at Fanex. It's not just nerdy people that go. Like there was a guy in a pea coat and jeans. Like you can tell he's never even heard yeah. of this, but it was a fun date night, right? Like it was something to do. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to be a nerd to appreciate it or go all the time to build a guild. Well, but remember, we kind of, you kind of, you never needed to be a nerd to, to appreciate it. it. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't set up properly. Like it could have been better for those people who were just one offing it. It could have been better. Was yeah, kind of what I we mean, talked about. There, the, the, how many people went just for the pumpkin patches, right? Where you can take pictures. Oh, yeah. And really? I know. Well I know. It, was, it, it seemed crazy to me that they could never get it to cash flow. Like yeah, they had, had they just great, never done the planning. Like, <laughs> yeah, they had great art. On? I think that the problem was is they had great artists, great visual effects people. Yeah, and they just got ahead of themselves. It happens, right? Why is season two sometimes worse than season one? You get ahead of yourself. They have to yeah. re- rein it in or or rethink the concept. Yeah, and their merchandise never was good. Like we bought a couple th- random things, but I was always disappointed with it. <laughs> well, they also had like. Going back to merchandise. contracts with the vendors. There was always just a random vendor, right? Right. And I don't think the vendors, maybe they paid a percentage. We don't have the details, but it didn't seem like it as much. You know what I mean? It just kind of seemed very disorganized. Massive, right? For them to be there all season, it's pricey. Yeah. It's not like a convention where it's twice, two days, three days for this month, and that's it. Right. And if you don't think merchandise matters, like, Star Wars was built on merchandise more than oh. anything else. And Fanex, like the amount of money that goes through there for the purchasing, Johnny and I, just for the artwork. Oh, drop. I mean, we, we make our, we make our uh, press badges work for us. So. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is it's like, yeah, we'll let you in as press because you're going to go in and drop 150 yeah. bucks on, we will. <laughs> on all our stuff. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. No, but it's, uh, but it's true though. I don't even remember. And they had nothing ever more branded i don't remember like no not really. they had like t-shirt. a few journals or other things but it's like <sighs> no it's not the same it's not the same as like building your own lightsaber or your or your own shard blade or or you know buying a costume or whatever like i don't know yeah it was it's one of the best things i've seen awesome theory just can't capitalize it was it felt like they never stuck the landing i guess is what no. you know what i mean like they got off the ground they spun really beautifully and they always Never could stick the landing. And they survived the pandemic. I mean, they closed four years after. Like, they yeah. had to shut down for two months, right? Yeah. It is funny when people are like, well, it's due to COVID complications. And you're like, well. They actually it, did like... really well. They, they picked a fight with Taylor Swift, which helped their name. Uh, <laughs> they invited. They were smart That was a publicity about, stunt. I know. 100%. Worked, right? I totally did. Yeah. And they did a good job with um, inviting big influencers over to take pictures which would help their, you know, their 30,000 followers to find out what this park is. Because I am still baffled how you and me will bring it up and people go, I've never heard of it. What is it? Yeah. Like you got at least, you've probably never been. That's fine. But I feel like you should have at least heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Johnny? Final, final thoughts. Do you think it's really going to get redeveloped? I want, no. I want like a final guess. Do you think Sanderson's going to come in and step in? Do you think I, it's just going to, do you think it's just going to be dead land or they just don't know what to do with it for a time? I think it's not going to be a pit. Don't worry. We don't need to fall down it. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think I'm going to lead towards, I'm going to be positive. Sanderson will do something with it. Sure. Well, that, that'll be my bold prediction. Ooh, if only we did this start of the year. Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I like that idea. Uh, all right. Well, since he took it, I'm not going to piggyback off that. I will give my I'm prediction. Gonna I'm going to say they're going to put up a bunch of housing next to it and within it, like some people live in those homes. <laughs> so I it's going to get redeveloped I'm, I'm gonna, into housing. Let's 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 combine our savings in 401k and let's get it going, man. I like <laughs> studios right there. Right here. It says I have a 401k. No, 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 no. You have a 401k, not 401,000. You idiot. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Rule won't survive. <laughs> that's my that's my prediction. We're going to turn it into housing, and it's just sort of like a park where like some of it's housing and some of it's just restaurants. And why not? It's its own little yeah. village. That would actually be a cool village to live in. You know that? Yeah. 
But especially but if I had HOA, good restaurants, the HOA fees are going to be atrocious, dude. Could you imagine? <laughs> Pay five hundred bucks a month, but people would. Yeah, I'm I might. Fine. Yeah, maybe yeah. not that much. I'm going but like, to. I have I have people who live in you know Arizona and paid four hundred bucks a month for their HOA. Oh fee. yeah, I mean, I'm not there's a subdivision by me that's like there's a lake on it and people pay a lot just to live off by the lake. It's not even that fancy of a lake. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's daybreak. I mean, it's not like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I went on a date around it. Actually, I went on a walk around it with a girl. I mean, I would just call it. You and me were, um, you know, just talking shop. I didn't even call it a date, Jay. But fine. Well, you date. wore a wig, so <laughs> we were incognito mode because <laughs> we get spotted everywhere we go. Oh yes, yes, hello, Johnny. Nerds. It's fine if I'm pretending you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how the deadlight nerds succeed. <laughs> Okay. I will say this final <laughs> note. If you worked at Evermore Park, if you met us there, thank you so much. That park helped us a lot, helped us grow a lot. Uh, we got really good views from it. We got to meet people. We like to say we started this for two reasons, to talk and to, to get into places for free. So It legitimized you. us. The two big things that legitimized us on our podcast was one was Evermore Park because suddenly we had a video that had thousands of views and two was getting Nick Padel on, I yeah. think. Those were the two big things where it was like, finally, like they after that, people, know what doing. dude, after that, people just let us into places. Like Fanix was like, yeah, you went to Evermore. Like, come on in. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Come in. <laughs> come in. Come in. And it really is about, you know, growth and, and giving nerds something to do. So we will be at Fanex. We will be at Ren Fair. Be our friend. Come talk to us. If you work at that park, we want to see you again. That, you know, come. Come grab some sunglasses and pens from us. You guys we gave out at least three people shirts and tons of sunglasses. Oh yeah. And come tell us about what you're doing next. Uh, you know, what, what's your next goal? Uh, or where do you see Evermore, Evermore Park coming? Or if you want to collaborate with a video with us, you're way more talented than we are. So we'd love it. And if you didn't sign an NDA, then you can come on and tell us all the horrible things that happened, you know? I mean, I'm sure one or two didn't sign it. Booker. <laughs> Yeah. Irish Booker. At the end of that cast, will be like, now Booker, look under your chair. <laughs> 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 It'll just That's how it should be. <laughs> we finally we finally get unfinished business. Finally got our uh, revenge. <laughs> but yeah, it's we can't thank you nerds enough for letting us go to that park. We missed it. Me and Jay, we loved going once or twice a year. It was the highlight of our videos. It really yeah. was. Uh but it was only once or twice a year. Right. Same as the Renaissance Fair and Fanex. Yeah. Well, Knights, what did you think of Evermore Park? Have you been? Do you regret not being able to go? What do you think is going to happen next? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll catch you on the flippity flop. Flippity flip. <laughs>